So we're continuing in our study in John chapter 3 regarding the new birth, being born again. So Jesus is having a conversation with a, a religious man by the name of Nicodemus. He's knowledgeable. He's a Pharisee. He's a ruler of the Jews. And he's asking Jesus some questions about eternal life. And Jesus is speaking now because after he tells Nicodemus she must be born again in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven, Nicodemus picks up in verse 4 of chapter 3. He says to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? It's a logical question. It's bizarre that Jesus uh, mentions this idea of being born again. So the first thing you think, well, how can that happen? I was born once. I can't go back into my mother's womb again. And Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water, which is the initial birth, uh, your, your mom gives you birth, the water breaks, and you're born as a human being. He says, unless one is born of water and the spirit, and the spirit birth is the new birth, it's being born again by the work of the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of the flesh, his flesh, so our first birth, natural birth through our moms, is uh, the initial way we're brought into this world as a human being. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So he's differentiating between the physical birth and the spiritual birth. So there's a lot of people that uh, think that they're heaven bound, but they've never been spiritually born. They've just been physically born. So Jesus then continues, do not marvel in verse seven that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from where it goes, so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus answered and said to him in verse 9, How can these things be? A big question mark. He's, he's blown away. And Jesus is describing this work of the Spirit as like the wind that blows. When you look at the wind, you can't see it unless you're looking at the atmosphere of a tree that's being moved, the leaves by the wind blowing or things blowing across your yard or the street or your hat blown off your head. Uh, the wind has a power. It has a supernatural phenomena that God created that can bring disturbances to a calm and tranquil environment. Well, whenever the wind blows, the wind of the spirit, you can't um, necessarily see in which direction it's coming, how it's coming, where it's coming from, where it's coming to. It just has a mind of its own, if you may, controlled by God. Well, God the Holy Spirit is working in the world to convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment that Jesus speaks about later in the Gospel of John. But in this instance, the miracle of new birth is a miracle. It's not something that our rational minds can wrap our heads around. Why is one person dead in sin, living as a pagan, then all of a sudden the work of the Spirit moves and they get saved, they're born again. They just tell you, man, I don't know, this miracle happened in my life, I'm not the same person anymore, I'm following Christ. And you look at someone that has come from a, a bad past, a, a rough life, and if you're not a Christian, you scratch your head, you say, well, how in the world could that happen? I mean, it, you know, it doesn't make sense. He was this way, living this way, and now he's living as a follower of God, a holy person, a spiritual being. And again, this is what Jesus is telling Nicodemus he needs. It's not religion. He needs a supernatural birth. And it comes by the moving of the work of the Holy Spirit, metaphorically described by the movement of wind. So I pray you've been born again. You must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. God bless you guys. We'll talk to you tomorrow.